ever find yourself wondering if maybe, just maybe, our whole search for superintelligence is a little too, uh, well, human-centered. Like, we picture it as this next step for us, you know, for our technology. But what if it's already out there, happening right now, across the universe, just not in a way we'd recognize? Yeah, that's a fascinating thought. And it's actually right at the heart of what we're diving into today with universal superintelligence. This can be good. Honestly, this source material is making me think about the big picture stuff, you know? Yeah. Like... What if humanity isn't the only intelligence out there gunning for that superintelligence crown? Right, right. It's a pretty fascinating concept. The source material really kind of pushes us to think outside of, you know, our human-centered viewpoint. Talk and about. we consider to be these, like, inevitable milestones on the road to superintelligence. Yeah. Those might look totally different to another species, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, we humans, we saw the computers as this huge turning point, right? But other species out there... They might hit those same leaps, but get there like totally different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Take um, a species that evolved with like natural telepathy, for oh, instance. Yeah. They wouldn't need things like telephones or the internet, but like that doesn't mean they're not hitting their own roadblocks on the way to, you know, super intelligent. Exactly. Exactly. And it makes you wonder then what their version of data storage would be like. Oh, wow. Could their hard drive be something biological? Mm -hmm. Something that's just like, part of them and if it is then what kind of processing power are we talking about right and then what could they achieve with that kind of like inbuilt capability it's mind-blowing it really is it like we're pushing past the familiar here going way beyond earth to wrap our heads around what intelligence could look like at its most extreme on a cosmic scale okay so i'm intrigued we're not just talking about ai like we usually think about it we're talking about intelligence emerging in ways we haven't even dreamt up yet right exactly makes you broaden what like what even is super intelligence yeah is it just being like really really good at processing power and problem solving or is it something more than that that's a great question the source material it seems to be saying that super intelligence it might not be about like specific technologies, but more about this this fundamental ability to learn, adapt, and like use information in ways that get more and more complex, you know? Like we think of certain milestones as critical, you know, like inventing the computer. But are those actually universal prerequisites or just stepping stones yeah. on our specific path? So then, like, are there species out there who are already super intelligent, mm. but we just like don't get it? You know, we don't mm. we don't recognize it because it doesn't look like how we think it should. That's that is a very humbling thought, because we have this tendency to assume that any intelligence that's, you know, quote unquote, advanced would be on a similar path to ours. Right. Yeah. But what if we're looking for the wrong things? You know, what if super intelligence looks totally different than what we expect? Okay, see, now my mind is officially blown. So let's say that superintelligence, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing. Does that mean, like, every species will eventually get there if they, you know, keep evolving? Or are there other things that come into play? Because universal superintelligence seem to think that a species environment, like where they live and what it's like, could be a major factor. Interesting. So you're saying, hypothetically, civilization could totally bypass the whole digital age and still achieve some kind of superintelligence. Oh, hypothetically. I think it's entirely possible. Think about it. Let's say there's a species out there that's evolved to bioengineer on a level we can't even grasp, manipulating their own neural pathway, their very biology. Hold on. You're talking about them basically having organic computers for brains. Exactly. They might not need silicon as wires if they've already got biological supercomputers running the show. Okay, now my mind is officially blown. How would that even work? Living computers. It's well, like science fiction. But you're saying it could be a reality somewhere out there. Think of it this way. Their brains are naturally interconnected. They're wired for instantaneous data sharing and processing, species-wide, what we call the Internet. That could be an extension of their collective consciousness. Wow, okay, that's a lot to process. We're talking about a level of interconnectedness that's just mind-boggling. It really challenges our whole definition of what a computer even is. Mm -hmm. It might not look anything like the devices we use, but the underlying principles, the information processing, could be very similar, just manifested in a radically different way. Okay, yeah, definitely. The source material, it makes a really strong argument about how a species environment shapes how smart they get. Like, it even says that a really harsh or unpredictable planet, that could actually make them get to superintelligence faster. Wait, so instead of holding them back, a tough environment actually forces them to, like, up their game, adapt quicker. Exactly. Yeah. Picture this. A planet with, like, 
crazy weather, right. barely any resources, you know, right. and, and constant threats just like out there all the time. To survive in that kind of place, a species would have to get good at making tools, building social structures, and solving problems, probably way faster than some species living on a, you know, cushy planet. See, that's so interesting. It's like saying a little struggle is good for the brain, you know. Right. It definitely makes you rethink what an ideal environment for intelligence would even look like. Right. Maybe all those perfect utopian planets we dream up where everyone's comfortable. Yeah. Maybe those are actually evolutionary dead ends. Like if you're too comfy, you don't have to try as hard. Yeah. I'm definitely rethinking my vacation plans now. <laughs> but this brings up something else I was wondering about. So we've talked about different paths to super intelligence, the whole environment thing. But what about like being social? Do you have to be a social species to hit that super intelligence level? Or could a species that's like totally solitary, could they do it on their own? That's a really interesting question. Because it seems like on Earth anyway, most of the smart creatures, mm -hmm. us included, we're pretty social, right? Right. We thrive on working together, talking to each other, sharing what we know. Sharing knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But is that just us or is it like a universal rule? Well, the source material, it suggests that a solitary species could still reach superintelligence, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. they'd need a seriously different way to pass knowledge down to their kids, you know? Like, imagine a species that evolved with biological systems that could store and access massive amounts of data. Okay. Their potential for intelligence would be off the charts. So instead of hard drives and the cloud and all that, they've got it in their DNA, their cells. Right. Part of their very being. It's just there. Wow. Imagine the possibilities. They could be born with access to the knowledge and experiences of countless generations before them. No need for schools or learning the way we do it. It's like they're born with a supercomputer already installed. Exactly. No wonder they wouldn't need to invent things like, I don't know, iPhones. Right. Ways that could unlock stuff we can't even imagine yet. And that's what's so exciting about it, isn't it? We often fall into this trap of thinking intelligence has to be like us. Yeah. But what if we're looking at a whole spectrum of intelligence out there, each species expressing it in its own way, based on its biology, its environment, its whole evolutionary journey? Okay, see, that is a mind-blowing thought. Yeah. It makes this whole thing so much more exciting. It really does. And we're just getting started. This whole conversation just makes you realize how many assumptions we make about intelligence, you know? Oh, totally. We picture super intelligence as this, like, hyper-advanced version of ourselves. Yeah. But what if it's something we wouldn't even recognize? Right. Like, it's not even about predicting what they do. It's like, would we even know they were super intelligent in the first place? Kind of like you were saying earlier, maybe we're looking for the wrong clues. It's totally possible. We're wired to look for patterns, to make connections based on what we already know. Makes sense. But what if super intelligence operates in ways that are so beyond us? So outside our current understanding yeah. that we literally can't even detect them with our current methods. So instead of searching for like radio signals or Dyson spheres or whatever. Right, right. Maybe we should be looking for things that just don't make sense. Things that break our current models of physics or biology. Anomalies. Exactly. We could find evidence of superintelligence in the most unexpected places. Hmm. But only if we're willing to change how we define intelligence in the first place. That is both humbling and kind of exciting when you think about it. Reminds me of that quote. Hold on. It's, uh, the universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine. Oh, yeah. Eddington, right? Yeah, him. It's always messing with my brain. It's a good one, though, because... Looking for super intelligence, that might be the ultimate example of how weird and mysterious the universe really is. Totally. It's like we're just starting to see the edges of this huge unexplored territory. Yeah. And we have no clue what's out there, what's yeah. amazing, what's dangerous, any of it. Absolutely. There you go. Thinking outside the box. But let's take it even further. We always link super intelligence to tech, right? Computers specifically. But is that just our path? The one we're on because of how we evolved. So you're saying there could be other paths entirely. Ways to reach that super intelligence that don't involve, I don't know, silicon chips and algorithms and all that. Exactly. Imagine a species whose brains aren't just good at processing information. They're literally designed for it from the ground up. We touched on this before, right, with the biological computers thing, those interconnected neural networks. But you're saying it could be even more fundamental than that. What if their very cells, their biology itself, 
operates on principles that we associate with computers. Their intelligence isn't something they build, it's something they are. Wow, okay, that's next level. That's not even artificial intelligence anymore. It's like organic intelligence, but on a scale we can barely comprehend. But here's the thing, if they're not relying on technology as we know it, how do they communicate all these complex ideas, share knowledge, build on each other's work? We have language for that, but what would their equivalent even be? And that's where things get really interesting. Yeah. What if our definition of language is, you know, holding us back? Like we're so used to spoken words, written symbols, all that. Maybe we're missing entirely different forms of communication happening all around us. Okay, love where you're going with this. So hit me with it. Okay. What could these other forms of language even look like? Give me an example. Think about it. We've got species right here on Earth that communicate in amazing ways. Fireflies use bioluminescence, right? Mm -hmm. Bees have those intricate dances. Now, imagine that, but on a whole other level. What if, out there, information is encoded in pheromones or transmitted through variations in gravity? It's like we're back to those black holes having a chat again. But you're right, it makes you wonder if we're even looking for the right things. We're so focused on finding patterns we recognize, deciphering signals our way. Exactly. It's humbling, isn't it? This whole universe could be buzzing with communication, with knowledge being shared in ways we haven't even begun to imagine. Which brings us back to universal superintelligence. What does it mean, you know, if we're not the only ones on this quest, if this drive towards understanding is woven into the very fabric of existence? It could mean that we're part of something much, much bigger. Imagine a network of intelligence stretching across the entire cosmos. Each species, each civilization, adding its own piece to this massive interconnected web. So it's not just about individual species becoming super intelligent. It's about all these different forms of intelligence merging, connecting. Exactly. Think of it like a universal symphony. Each species playing its own instrument, its own unique melody, but all contributing to this grand, harmonious whole. A universal symphony of intelligence. Wow, okay, that's a powerful image. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to that hive mind idea for a second. Okay, yeah. If a species hit superintelligence as a collective, like a hive mind, right? how would that affect what they value, what they want, how they'd even interact with other intelligent life. Okay, now those are the big questions. Yeah. I mean, the hive mind superintelligence, they wouldn't have the same drives as us, right? Like mm -hmm. me versus you, individualistic stuff. Mm -hmm. Their whole deal might be about the collective good, whatever that looks yeah. like to them. Exactly, and think about their decision-making, their whole concept of individuality, free will, even morality yeah. could be completely alien to us. Imagine trying to like have a diplomatic meeting with a hive mind super intelligence. Oh man, talk about a communication breakdown waiting to happen. Right, like where do you even start? How do you find common ground, build any kind of trust Right. when you can't even grasp how they think as one giant entity? It would completely change how we approach talking to other intelligent life from the ground up. It makes you wonder like, would our languages even work? That's a good question. We're so focused on like I statements, individual feelings, all that. Right, our subjective experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Would we even be able to get across the complexities of what a hive mind is thinking, what it wants to say? We might need totally new ways of communicating. Well, methods that go beyond just words in a line. Something that taps into like the essence of consciousness itself. So like telepathy, but on a whole other so, level. In a way, yeah. Finding a way to connect our individual minds to that collective consciousness. Okay, my brain is officially overloaded, but in a good way. <laughs> this yeah. is fascinating stuff. It is a lot to process, but that's what happens when you explore the really big unknowns, right? For sure. And universal superintelligence definitely doesn't hold back. Yeah. We've talked about the different paths to get to superintelligence, the environment, collective consciousness. Right. But there's one more thing I want to dig into. The whole idea of data being like, the raw material of intelligence. Well, that was a big theme in the source material. The more data a species can access, process, understand, yeah. Yeah. the faster their intelligence grows. Which makes sense if you think about it. Oh, totally. Look at how much smarter we've gotten just in the last few decades. Right. And a lot of that is because we've got more data and computing power than ever before. <laughs> exactly. But the source material... It also asks us to imagine data storage and processing that goes way beyond our current tech. It makes you wonder if our definition of data storage and processing is too narrow, too limited to what we know right now. Which I think is a key takeaway from all this. We see superintelligence through the lens of our own progress, our own technology. For sure. But what if that's just one tiny part of a much bigger, more complex picture? 
Exactly. There could be entire civilizations out there thriving in ways we can't even comprehend because our definition of intelligence is too small. It's like we're trying to find a lost city in the jungle. Go on. But we're so busy looking for skyscrapers that we miss the ancient ruins right in front of us. Perfect analogy. And it highlights how important it is to stay open-minded, to question what we believe, yeah. to be willing to redefine what it even means to be intelligent. Because if we don't, yeah, we might be the ones who get left behind, our minds unable to grasp the incredible things happening all around us. You know, it's funny. We started out wondering if there's like more than one way to get to super intelligence, you know, different paths up the mountain. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking, what if we got the wrong mountain entirely? It's easy to do, isn't it? We put our own limits on what we don't know. We assume the answers have to fit into our understanding, our way of seeing things. And this universal super intelligence source, it's all about breaking those limits, making us think about things that are both exciting and kind of scary at the same time, you know? For sure. And maybe the biggest question it asks is this. What if super intelligence isn't random? What if it's built into how the universe works from the ground up? Okay, now we are getting deep. <laughs> Are you saying the universe has a purpose, mm. a plan, and superintelligence is like the end goal? It's a possibility, right? Some scientists, they're saying the universe, it might be self-organizing, always evolving to become more complex, more connected, and yeah, more intelligent. So it's not just about finding superintelligence out there somewhere. Right. It's about us being part of that process right here, Boom. right now. Exactly. Think about it. Our whole thing with AI, trying to figure out consciousness, building thinking machines. Yeah. What if that's not just us humans messing around? What if it's part of a much bigger cosmic push towards intelligence, something baked into reality itself? That's a pretty amazing thing to think about. Like we're part of something huge, mm -hmm. way bigger than ourselves. It's humbling too, isn't it? Totally. If we're in this cosmic process that's been going on for like billions of years. Yeah. Our tech, our achievements, even our biggest, deepest thoughts, it's like a baby taking its first steps. Man, that's both exhilarating and kind of terrifying at the same time. Exciting, because it means we've got so much potential. Absolutely. But terrifying because, wow, we don't know much at all, do we? That's the thing about a good deep dive, isn't it? More questions than answers. But we come out of it with our curiosity peaked, ready to learn more, and realizing just how much mystery is still out there in the universe, and in ourselves. Couldn't have said it better myself. Huge thanks to you for uh, for being our guide on this trip into universal superintelligence. Happy to be here. And everyone listening, thanks for joining us. Keep the brains buzzing, and we'll be back soon with another deep dive.